The international business, uh, the International Christian Chamber of Commerce, um, I've, I've known you, um, I've known them for uh, about 20 years uh, and uh, was part of some of your first uh, business activities in Israel. I know this is not the, the I believe, this, is this the second, is this the third or the fourth matchmaking um, event that you've been involved in, the fourth, the fourth. Yeah, uh, I, I would definitely say of the Christian business networks worldwide, um, ICCC has proven itself really to be the top partner that Israel has um, in creating business connections and, and supporting the economy of Israel. And um, right now, ICCC has a fantastic leader, Jan Sturzen, who over uh, the, the last year has become a very personal friend of mine. I just have to tell this short story before I, tell, before I give you a little of, of all the amazing things Jan has done. Uh, we were in a meeting in his home in Billeberg, Sweden. Uh, Billeberg, I think I'm, I'm pronouncing that right. And I was, as I was walking out, I mentioned the fact that my, that my wife Shelly is a musician and that sometimes I'm her backup percussionist. And Jan says, you play the drums? I play the drums. I want to show you something. So he said, come with me. So he took me down to what I would call a man cave, which is a, his basement that has two full drum sets. And we found there congos and bangos and cajon and everything that we want. And we jumped on the drums. We had about an hour jam session together, Jan. Those of you who know Jan know that he has explosive energy. But I can tell you that until you've seen him on a drum set, you have not seen anything. Oh, um, besides being a very accomplished drummer and, and the chairman of the International Christian Chamber of Commerce, um, Jan uh, was a um, partner at the International Board of PwC, uh, which is one of the largest, if not the largest, accounting firms in the world. By the way, I think they're having another conference across the hall from us uh, today. Um, he was also part of the World Economic uh, Forum, a member of the Future Agenda Council of Governance, and today he has an, an advising company called Resting, where he gives uh, advice to both the private sector and governments, particularly in the area of, of innovation and building smart cities. Um, and he's just a, a wonderful friend. Let's give him a warm welcome as he comes up to share a few words with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to the Drum Cave. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, uh, it's really a great honor and privilege to be here speaking today and be part of the arrangement together with Arise and many others on this event, uh, the Arise Business Matchmaking Summit 2018. So, I would like to say that the last uh, three days, we at IC have had a conference in Jerusalem uh, on the topic of uh, the Commonwealth of Israel, releasing a blessing to the nations. We have great speakers like Miriam Cohen, uh, Caleb Mayer, and Jörg Bühler. We've had exciting things together. We also have a, a prototyping exercise about trying to see how can we scale up the ICC engagement with Israel to five, six other business ministries around the globe, so connect with Israel to stand up and do business for the future. So that we hope to be able to, in the future, to, to really to get 25 to 50 our Christian business ministries into this process. I would also like to say that we started ICC 1985 by a man called Jaeger Gunnar Olsson in Örebro. And uh, it took him some years, 1991 was the first encounter with Israel. And uh, ICC decided to take a decision in the board to stand in the, in the gap for Israel, just as Hezekiel said. I've searched for a man, but I found no one to stand in the gap for the country. So we said, let's stand as friends for Israel, whatever happens. And we took a decision, and in 91, we were sponsoring the first flight from Russia with the homecoming use. 1992, the first business matchmaking. And then we went on and on, a lot of things has happened. Africa collaboration, four different nations came 2008. We tried to open up between African nations and the state of Israel. And there was a lot of press about that, that uh, event. And also there have been business collaboration and, and delegations of different, from 17 countries last year, and, and so on and so forth. But that's, you know, that's history. We are not here to talk about archaeology, what's happened yesterday. We're talking about the future. 
And the future is like an apple tree. When you see the apples and you grab the apples, you eat them. Then you eat the history. But you start to, to dig down and fertilize and give water to the soil and to the roots. Then you plan for the next conference, as Miriam said. This is the next. This is the future. So I would say that we have been very much uh, inspired by the, 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 the Bible to work here. And we are not in ICC, I would say, romantic, flag-waving guys who like to have some water from the River Jordan with us home. We would like to do business because we think business is the future. And it's about the future of growth and development. And it's about uh, having uh, the, the different organizations together. And we know that Israel is number one in venture cap, in innovation ecosystems, in growth and development, low debt, and in the blossom economy. So it's time to see that it's, it's, it's smart to invest in Israel. And it's stupid not to do it. So there are many arguments we figured out when we speak with people around the globe. So let me also say that in our collaboration with the Export Institute, and not least Mr. Shraga Brosh, has been extremely instrumental for us when, we have been, when we've been working. I also would like to say that when we think about the future, it is basically about technology and values. Technology, yes, number one, no doubt about it. That's booming right through the roof. And values, yes, in the roots we have those Hebrew values, Jewish values, Christian values linked to the, to the Bible and so on. And I would say, if I look into the future, it should make a risk analysis. I think the technology is going right away, but do we, do we need to capture more about the values into the next season? When we think about who is creating the algorithms for the self-driving cars, the human robots, I met quite a few of those human robots, it's scary. What's behind this thinking of ethic, morale, and behavior? I think here is time to scale up. And scaling up and standing up and, and doing things is what I would like to say. And we have found some inspiration in a piece in, in, from uh, Isaiah. It says, enlarge the place of your tent and let the strength out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes, for you shall expand to the right and to the left for your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. It's about scaling up. It's about taking territory. It's about uh, doing things and to expand. And I think we should expand the future discussion, technology links to value even, even stronger. Because we don't need a second Tower of Babel 2.0. That can happen if we go wrong with the value system when we, when we apply technology. So I would say that what we, what we see now uh, is a very interesting time to live in. And Mr. Trotsky said to, in 1917 that uh, the, uh, the, the person who would like to live and have a peaceful life have chosen the wrong, wrong century to live in and be born to. That's absolutely right. So we need to enjoy to see what can we do together. And I think also, but when we talk about expansion, it's about to understand from our side and mutually from, from Israel's side, that there is about way be, between 700 million to 1 billion Christians. It, I think it's about 250 to 350 million who are friends who love Israel. Think about it, some X percent of these 350 million has a bank account in Israel. And say, well, part of my savings goes here. Why? Because it's secure. Why? Because there is a common future with Christians and Jewish. Because we have also a common history. But now we talk future. And I would dream of to have a platform of platforms for business undertake and different initiatives in this country to say, yes, there are hundreds of business, Christian business organizations, but, and they have great platforms, but who has the platform for the platforms? Israel will have the platform of platforms to scale up, to interact, to find new interface, interfaces and in-between spaces who will take us to the next. Because an in-between space is entrepreneurship. Entrepreneur. In between. To see the in-between, to grab the space and go. We would like to grab that space together with you. And I will also say that I think the time has come to say very clearly that to you, friends in Israel and to the state of Israel, 
the world needs you. We, the Christian community, needs you. And by the way, in brackets, you need us. <laughs> so take the lead. I will also say the future needs you. So take the lead in the forthcoming, no, the fifth coming industrial revolution. Because you have it all. And we're happy to partner with you based upon Hebrew biblical values and become a, better, and become a, a, a blessing to the nations. Shalom. Thank you very much. God bless you.